from that one, I'm quickly going to touch upon the Tremaine Emery interview courtesy of the Torre show. Big up Torre for sitting down and basically um, doing the interview in the first place. Um, I think it was good that Tremaine sat down with somebody who he probably respects, somebody he felt like would give him a fair shot because he didn't come into the interview with his backup. He was a bit more open and forthright and was willing to kind of be a bit introspective, was willing to kind of answer some of the criticisms that he was getting uh, based on his decision to leave Supreme, the reasons behind it and some of the weird positions that he was taking on it. But one thing that was very clear to me, having watched the interview with Tremaine on the Torre show, was I feel like fundamentally it really wasn't that big of a deal. I think at the time it was blown out of proportion a little bit. Maybe I played a part in it with some of my reactionary videos and clips and stuff. Who knows? But I think by and large, there was a difference of opinions, objectives, expectations when it came to the job, which is unfortunate. And I feel like there was a real breakdown in communication very early on. Um, I feel like he definitely came into a job expecting it to be one thing and then when he went in there it was a different thing and also the culture didn't match and I just think being seeing that he was an independent contractor an independent entrepreneur creative artist for the best part of a decade you know doing his own thing maybe even more before he got that supreme job it just came about at the wrong time he wasn't institutionalized he didn't believe in the myth of supreme or the myth of the industry that kind of been shattered to him um shattered for him he was best friends with virgil who was the antithesis of breaking um that sort of like um so, you know breaking that focus sort of um breaking that mindset um or that fucking yeah that mindset that everyone had where you sort of believed in the myths of the industry and the validation that they kind of needed or that you needed in order to feel somewhat accepted and to feel like you were valid and you had a place there and the you know and the insistence on wanting permission from people to do things that all went away so maybe the supreme job came for him at the wrong time maybe if he would have got the supreme job early on he probably would have been a bit more malleable he probably been a bit more open to um compromise but being your own boss for the best part of 10 plus years and then getting a job working for supreme who are in the vf corp era where they essentially have their own bosses they have to answer to it was never really going to work well so i just think that was by and by and large the main issues with it and i also think he probably went in there thinking hey this company is also edgy in its own way they will not have an issue with me being edgy in my way or being provocative with the stuff that i chose and what i think he realized quite quickly was that supreme like most streetwear brands out there aren't really provocative they aren't really political they don't really have anything to say they're just in the business of making clothes and whatever makes clothes um and whatever sorry makes money they will make it's not really anything deeper than that maybe the brand owner the founder might have a deeper message on his graphics or on the particular colors used or on the models or on the cut whatever there may be loads of coded messages you know in these clothing like similar to flipping demna but the majority of people that wear vetema that wear balenciaga you know they don't wear it because it's overtly political or because it says anything interesting or cool about the fashion industry which it obviously does and it's kind of poking fun at it they wear it because it's cool that's it and i think he quickly realized that this company that he thought that stood for something doesn't really stand for anything apart from selling clothes which is nothing wrong with it because i'm not somebody that believes that fashion or streetwear should be political i personally think it should just be a platform to express ideas if they happen to be political fair play but you can't you shouldn't use fashion and streetwear as a vehicle to um, push a political agenda. Personally, in my opinion, I just think it's never going to end well for you because most people don't really care and you're going to end up kind of making yourself cry. But regardless, um, I feel like, he, you know, Tremaine defended himself well as best as he could. I fundamentally disagree with probably 90 percent of his stances and how he approaches things and it was only a little bit it was probably a little bit disappointing over time to see that he probably wasn't the guy in my head who he thought he was in terms of how he viewed himself in terms of how he viewed the industry in terms of how important fashion and design is in terms of actually changing things in the real world um you know it's just a bit odd but i did really admire one thing i really liked i think i was doing sort of giggled at myself with myself a little bit every time i watched it there were parts in the interview where he almost sounded very yayish i think that's what happens when you're around when you're around yay he started listing off his own accolades talking about the time that he worked at yeezy which was quite cool how his time was split across working with the clothes and working with music which was he was one of the only people that could do that the close relationship with yay with virgil the stuff he did with stussy being the artistic director of the day which i didn't know about so he was really basically letting his nuts hang and reminding people that he's a big deal and i like that about him i like that about the episode but it really was a reminder that you know 
sometimes in life it is really important to get a handle or to get an idea of what you're walking into before you walk into it because not all opportunities are what they seem to be you know the grass ain't always green on the other side and i think he soon quickly realized that you know even with that 600 grand a year you know salary the option to work for such a storied brand the the, the, the what it could add to his legacy what it could add to his cv the connections it could make all this sort of stuff in the end the things that really annoyed him were the fact that he wasn't being listened to he wasn't being seen he wasn't being acknowledged he wasn't being respected um and ultimately the dream that he had in his head of this brand that he always loved being a part of that entire supreme extended team since the late 90s didn't really live up to his expectations so that could have probably been a real big bummer so i'm going to play a couple of the clips for you here this one says tremaine was a former designer and creative director of supreme and he recently stepped down we talk about what happened so this is a clip taken from the torres show instagram so you can hear what he had to say what did you foresee the supreme customer thinking and saying when presented with here's a hoodie here's a t and skateboards uh, and skateboards yeah with an image of a cuz what what do, what do you what do you think is the end result there or the thought and the intention of the wearer i think it's the same thing they'd say when supreme released a t-shirt of two catholic nuns um one with a cross in her hand the other nun with her her ass out and a gag ball in her mouth or when they've released uh dash nose artwork of human se with his semen or on the cover of the New York Post of Saddam Hussein with glitter on it. If the customer is intelligent, yes. and if they've been following Supreme, Supreme puts out provocative art with artists. Yes. They just never do it with black artists. I love how he's equating provocative art with the depictions of black people being lynched. You know what I mean? Like, surely at your, at your level, at your stage, in your position, you'd want that not to be just provocative art. Right, you don't you don't want that association at all. But I think fundamentally, what you see from here is just basically. I think Tremaine has this idea that humanity, the black race, the world overall, will never move on until it makes peace of its past. Effectively, it's what he's trying to basically say. Until we make peace of our past, until we rid the world of racism, we will never really move on. I think he actually make the point of saying that. Actually, he said that once you know there's no more racism in the world or there's no more police brutality, he'll stop making anything, you know that he basically already makes at the moment, which is a weird, really place to go because essentially it's him committing himself to a life um, of like trauma porn designing, which is an odd place to be at. But I think that's where he fundamentally had a bit of a disconnect with Supreme. They don't see the world in that way. They don't view it in that way. They don't think um, the ills of the world can be cured through a coach jacket, through a t-shirt, a hoodie, an escape deck comp, an escape deck collection. Um, they just see those as, you know, objects of maybe you can throw some art on it. Some art they are okay to put on it, some not. But I feel like they really did dodge a bullet. Supreme don't need that kind of smoke. Can you imagine how crazy people have, would have been on social media if they would have eventually put out those decks and those t-shirts with those images of people being lynched and being whipped and shit on skateboards and hoodies and whatever it may be can you imagine even some of Tremaine's friends who you know are incredibly um rah-rah political BLM people on social media if they had to be confronted with seeing some dorky looking white kid wearing these images of people who have been brutalized and in pain with people and imagine if Supreme didn't come out and say overtly that they were going to contribute any money to charity or funds and stuff how bad that would have went so I think you know, it was a really smart, in, in the short term, it was bad because it made Supreme look like a racist company because that's what he essentially says. He comes to the interview and basically says, you know, Supreme is, you know, what's it, what's it systemically racist. Um, he even mentioned some names. I think Erin McGee um, from Made Me, who's a bit of a streetwear legend, if you know, you know, she comes out of this not looking the greatest. Basically, Tremaine, without saying it clearly, basically calls her a racist basically says she um is a an ally to um who's that guy that what um i forgot who the guy is um some designer who virgil was beefing with before he passed away um or the gazana was beefing with him actually because virgil because he thought virgil was copied some of his designs and um he basically says in a roundabout way that you know that thing was scrapped because um some people in the company weren't happy with how he spoke to virgil before obviously the denim tears uh, Tremaine Sawyer joined and then when he left 
he allegedly heard that Aaron McGee was trying to resurrect that collaboration, which is in effect him saying without saying that, you know, she's endorsing this guy um, and kind of, you know, vetoing and being okay with it and kind of excusing whatever she, he might have said about Virgil in the past, which is essentially saying that, hey, this woman is racist. So he doesn't really, you know, he doesn't really pull any punches. But I just feel like, unfortunately, the company that he went to wasn't about that fight they didn't really want to fight that fight they didn't care about it it wasn't there you know it wasn't something that they really gave a fuck about and maybe that was the most disappointing part for him when he was there and then next video here um Tremaine breaks down the exact reason why he actually has supreme here's the thing with supreme and this is where this is i didn't resign because of the aj images i resigned because of their thoughtlessness and their lack of response when i was trying to garner just Discourse. I said to them, hey, do you realize Supreme is a Michael from Macro of American society? How so? If you look at the Supreme artist t-shirts where an artist takes a picture with wearing a Supreme logo, 80% of them are black. When okay. you look at Supreme artist collaborations where they put an artist's art, a fine artist's art on a skateboard, they've done two black people in 30 years. They've done only a couple of women. Everything else is white. Man. As they say in woke terms, cis male artists. Yeah. So I said that replays out American society. We like Mike Tyson and Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan and LeBron James, but in James Baldwin and Arthur Jaffa, mm, I don't know if we're going to let that creep into popular culture. I don't know about that. I think that's a really um reductive way to look at it and also i don't think people can say james baldwin isn't exactly contemporary um th there are many a people who i know who are non-black who love james baldwin um to suggest that he's some some <laughs> he's he's on the same level of um underground or unknown as arthur jaffa based on maybe how provocative and controversial his work is is crazy but hey whatever there may be the takeaway from this again is just a lack of you know, there just wasn't enough, there wasn't enough synergy, I guess, between both of them. Even though it sounds like when he was hired, Supreme definitely had an idea of who he was. Like they headhunted him. He mentions some guy called, what's his name? Julian or something. Julian Khan, I think. He used to work at Nike. Actually, yeah, I think it was Julian. He used to work at Nike because I remember him from my time working at 1948. I remember people mentioning his name quite often. And I think I may have seen him one time before. He's, I think he's French as well if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, he mentions him and he mentions that guy calling him and basically saying, hey, we want to hire you. So he never applied for the job. So I can understand his frustration, right? He never even applied for the job. He wasn't even thinking about it. They headhunt him. So he's with, he kind of automatically thinks they know what he's about. He tries to do what he's about at the brand and they say no. Or they don't even say no. They just basically um, give him a runaround. They're not clear with him. Um, they make it seem like they're down, you know, there's a conversation he says he had with James Jebbia where he was really down with it and he was giving this whole, oh, you know, he was giving it the whole like um, white guilt thing and about, yeah, I see my my kind of, you know, my blind spots and da 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 da, I didn't see my privilege before, all this nonsense talk he gives him and unfortunately Tremaine was naive and didn't understand that he was just kind of, you know, paying him lip service but his actions didn't speak up to what he said and he obviously didn't follow through with the collaboration with Arthur Jaffa which now we know his pronunciation is not Arthur Jaffa it's Arthur Jaffa and Tremaine did also make that very very clear in this clip which is fucking hilarious um but yeah I just think there was a um, lack of synergy between them wasn't that big of a deal um I feel like it's unfortunate how it ended obviously and it's also been unfortunate as a fan of the brand to realize that you know the store isn't very reflective or the store the community um or the things that they push out isn't really reflective of how they are behind the scenes um he's he basically is saying that you know they're not run the same way that you think they're depicted in the stores and how cool and fun those places are um you know the content that you put out via the skate videos um just in general the vibe around them the people associated with the brand it just doesn't match up with how they are in the head office which is the only kind of concerning bit about it but i also think tremaine was in a perfect position i also think tremaine was in a perfect position to change that he could have easily changed that himself and um, being there all those frustrations that he had with not being seen with maybe not having enough black people there with not people having enough people up from minorities communities there um, he could have easily hired a few of those people while he was there and kind of changed things but he didn't for whatever reason and it kind of went south and you know it kind of is what it is um it's just been unfortunate to see it all kind of play out because for the longest time supreme has been very secretive very behind the scenes kind of doing things quietly and to see what their business kind of being put out there has been a pretty 
pretty weird to see, to be honest, because, you know, some of the names even associated with Supreme, you wouldn't know them unless you're balls deep with a brand or unless you speak to somebody that actually works there. So to hear all these names associated with the brand, people who work there behind the scenes and to hear him speak so disparagingly about it, it's like, damn, man, this brand that you loved probably isn't as great as you think it is on the inside which makes a lot of sense because i remember the time when i was working at nike and i had this you know i had this idea or this fatuation with working at nike i wanted to be the next you know nike energy marketing manager right and that was the main big job to have back in the day i think even heron preston had it before and a few other people too but it was one of the main cool jobs to have at nike because you were like going to fashion shows you could like see things to people you were in charge of doing cool marketing campaigns and activations with certain things and collaborations and bloody blah, blah blah you were just the kind of cool guy at nike um contact that they could kind of use and throw around and send different places and it just would felt like a fun job to have and obviously with the free nike that you need in it so obviously amazing but then over time working again this is at a retail level at 1948 over at nike i quickly realized that maybe that company wasn't the greatest culturally um, it wasn't the greatest cultural match for me obviously i didn't help things because there were certain occasions where I was very obtuse. I was very, you know, cocksure. I kind of had a bit of that Zoomers mentality in me where I felt entitled to big jobs, even though I had no knowledge of what the job was. I just had, you know, knowledge of the product and of the culture and I was tapped in. I felt like, yeah, I knew more than anybody. You know, I, mean, I just had this really weird ego about me. So I'm sure that didn't really lend itself well to a lot of people that worked in the head office. And, you know, by the time it ended, I was probably one of the first people after five or so years at that company who got let go after the reshuffle because another lady came in. Actually, I think it was Sharmadine, wasn't it? Yeah, Sharmadine actually came in to replace the person. Sharmadine um, from uh, Wire Nails, who now has gone on to do loads of other cool things. She came in as a new person to overtake that kind of role. And then she basically got her own people involved and she kind of sacked everybody, um, including me, unfortunately. Um um, and a few other people and then got her own people involved which is odd really because I think I might have been one of the only black people I don't know it doesn't matter anyway we continue so I got let go and a few other people got hired but some people stayed and I think I, that was the first time I realized oh okay cool maybe I'm just not cut out for this like industry thing because clearly I didn't make a good enough impression to have kept my role in that place so I kind of knew and also I had people work I had people who I knew from the scene who made it there who kind of worked their way up and had good positions there and I realized comparing myself to them personality wise they had more capacity to do that kind of you know role and to be that person than I did they could just manage it a lot more better which is fine and I feel like maybe that was Tremaine's error he just assumed because he knew these people, he could also work with them. I think it's different when you work with them. And again, it also must be different having been an independent contractor, an independent business owner for all those years and then suddenly having to go work in a corporation. It's just difficult to handle and difficult to make right. And like I said, sometimes just working at these companies just isn't what you thought it was. It's not doesn't mean it's bad or good. It just isn't what it was. And culturally, I think he mentioned even himself, like, just the the culture in the office was a, was the thing that really didn't sit well with him being in the office full of just white people was hard to handle because it didn't maybe match his image of supreme and it's just something that he didn't know was as important as it was to him because he lives a life where he can basically hang out who he wants to hang out then you're going to work and you're with these people who work this job and they're all a particular way they all think a particular way or they look a particular way it could just be a bit unsettling so i just think unfortunately for him the cult culturally it didn't match it was a good opportunity it didn't go the way it needed to go but i think in all it probably did bolster his profile it made him way more relevant than maybe he was before personally i think his brand has become what it's become but i feel like his brand was starting to maybe eclipse even him Denim Tears is starting to become a little bit more popular than even Tremaine the person. So the this whole controversy has propelled him back into the cultural conversation, has reminded people what he's about, what he stands for, for better or worse. And I think in the end, it will end up doing him good. So I don't think it's a bad thing. But then I think this is an interesting comment and an interesting clip of Angela Back, who used to be the, if I'm not mistaken, was it the fashion director or the art? I forgot what the role was, but essentially it was the precursor to the creative director role that Tremaine had where he was sort of the face of Supreme and he had that role prior and he left to start his own brand called Awake which it's kind of been a bit up and down I feel like the recent lookbook that I've checked out recently kind of felt like it was very the hundreds coded it's a bit it felt a bit naff or whatever I'm not really too sure maybe that's his taste of how he likes to do his clothes but it just it didn't feel like it just felt a little bit uninspired personally for me but hey what do I know Anyway, he sat down with Throwing Fits and had a very interesting perspective on the whole thing. And I felt like, to me, this is everything that's probably wrong with the scene. 
because Tremaine had to take all those bullets from people on social media, calling him out, myself included, mocking him, laughing at him for how his position on Supreme and calling it systemically racist and all this malarkey. But then I've had one person in my comments who said they worked for VF Corp and who've known people from Supreme and said, yes, there are some issues at Supreme in, to do with racism and to do with those things. So it's not like Tremaine is lying. And also in this clip, um, Angela back confirms it, but he never said this before. So now all of a sudden, after many years of him leaving the company, much distance has gone, much time has gone by. A lot of distance has been made between him and Supreme. He's made his own name for himself, for his own brand. Tremaine had to take all the bullets himself or be mocked online, only for this guy to say much after the fact, once prompted, yes, Supreme has actually maybe got a racism problem. Like these guys, man. Tremaine and your ex-employer Supreme, could you kind of understand where he was coming from as someone that used to work there as a POC? Working there was very challenging. As a POC. I was the only person of color that worked there in a position of power. So I understand Tremaine's frustrations. And if you really look at the blueprint of what I've been building post-Supreme, you understand what my experience was there. It's no coincidence that, and first of all, I fucking hate when people say awake and woke. Awake has nothing to do with being woke. <laughs> awake came about because I wanted to build something refined at first, right? I was changing and developing and my ideologies were different and also like my tastes were, were a little bit, bit more refined than what was happening at Supreme at that time. And then I'm like, I need to start creating a place, building a place that can actually be a platform of opportunity for kids that look like me. When change doesn't happen, something has to happen inevitably in order for there to be change. You know what I'm saying? So like me knowing the inner workings of there and me being close to Tremaine all these years is just like, Good luck. Did you advise him on taking that role? Like, did you talk about it beforehand? He just no. I would have advised of the inner workings in order to be able to navigate that place to his advantage. I find that absolutely hilarious, right? And again, these guys act like they're all best friends and they're all this big click and shit, but. You know, it's all just for Instagram. I guess we know that now, isn't it? Because if you knew someone was legitimately going to walk into a quote-unquote racist environment, you'd go out of your way. If you are that person who deems yourself to be woke, who deems yourself to be progressive, you would definitely make sure to make them aware of it before they go there. You wouldn't just sit back and let them take the job and see how it goes. But again, these guys are all full of shit. But it must be so disconcerting for fucking, for fucking um, what you call it, Tremaine. He took all those bullets, he took all that hate online, all that valid criticism, some of it quite, you know, constructive, some of it also quite abusive, only to have somebody that worked there previously in a position of power say the same thing that he said in a roundabout way. Absolutely hilarious. The only thing that's different, I think, with this is more so, I feel like Tremaine's issue is there's loads of them at once. There's obviously the work culture. There's obviously the systemic racism, racism thing. There's obviously him feeling like his position wasn't respected because he, he basically said that, James Jebbia is the creative director without a title. He's still the one in charge. He still calls the shots, which to me is quite cool because it, it goes to show why the brand has still been survive, it's still been able to survive and thrive over the last 20 plus years because James Jebbia is still at the helm. He's still leading it. We already see what happens with fucking, um, with a negoless bape. It's absolutely horrendous, right? That brand is not even bape. It should just change its name to something else, but you will see how that goes wrong. So clearly that's been a part of its success, but obviously him working in that position for so long, it's going to be hard for him to kind of relinquish the power and the authority and the autonomy to somebody else, right? He's going to obviously try, it's going to be weird to kind of have somebody working alongside you or somebody that should be calling the shots when you maybe still feel like you should be doing it yourself. Um, so that was maybe the fucking interesting thing to hear about with this type of thing going on there, that clearly all these issues at Supreme were there from, for a while, but no one spoke about it because again the scene the people in it have this weird idea that you have to protect things and you can't talk about things out loud and i'm sure if you meet that met these guys in bars and pubs they will tell you and tell you to keep it to yourself but these are things that you'd think are important enough for the public to know are important enough for you to put out there to forewarn people especially if they want to work there or just to maybe change things in society to change things culturally in the kind of scene that we're in but they don't do it so this is to me I love another example of hashtag brave right you don't say anything until the coast is clear until it's safe for you to pop your head up and say something by that time it's too late and you know everybody's opinions kind of been set on it because essentially this guy is basically saying the same thing that um denim tears i uh, sorry that tremaine emery is was saying um but saying it in a much more palatable way so in the end it ended how it ended i think everyone's going to land on their feet you don't need to cry for anybody involved in this story because they're going to be perfectly fine because they're going to be perfectly fine